Welcome back to the Gospel According to T, people. Listen, we're back again with part two. My guy Parker, man. Parker's a guy, again, if you listened to the first episode, hopefully you learned something most importantly about yourself. That being said, um, being an entrepreneur is difficult. Uh, it's complicated. <laughs> and I always say, in my opinion, you can't serve two masters. And, and at the end of the day, we got into a discussion off camera with the True Beast podcast the other day of how women often... They jump on board what you're doing because they like the lifestyle you live in until the lifestyle takes away from the time that they want or demand from you. But you met me going a thousand miles an hour. Right. <laughs> and I'm not going to slow down yeah. because if I slow down, then I will, we won't have this. Yeah. So it's, that's an interesting point, right? So it's all about, I think, communication. Right? Yeah. Um, I have definitely faced this challenge uh, before, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but it requires, uh, you know, like you said, right? Yeah, if you met me this way, or even if I grew to be this way, um, it, it's important for a mature partner to be like, "Hey, uh, I need your attention," you know, <laughs> <clears throat> and vice versa. Because you know, even in the moments where I'm going a thousand miles an hour, like you still have these personal needs, and you just kind of stuff them back. You just like, I don't need that right now because I need money and. And it's, it's important to honor those, right? Because whether it be your, whatever your love language is, affection, gifts, whatever, time, who cares? Uh, all those things will take a toll on your psyche, right? And then how you execute, because, you know, how can you deliver good results in your business if you're not, if you're not getting, you know, you're not secure at home, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of, especially for me, my reason to work so hard isn't just because of you know, the reality uh, that I like to do, the things that I do. Uh, but it's also because I need to secure my, I've got kids, right? Yeah. And I've got, you know, I've got family and I want to make sure that, you know, these people in my life are secure, you know, like I don't want to go home and, and be working so hard and, and, you know, not have anything to show for it. Like that <laughs> sucks. And so <clears throat> with that being said, right, like you have to find that balance, right? There's, there's definitely something there. And sometimes it's your partner to say, Hey, look, take care of yourself or, take care of me. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes it's, Hey, uh, you know, like you're going too fast, right? You need to slow down for a little bit and really think about the bigger picture. Go like to what we talked about earlier, right? Having that, that perspective. Yeah. Sometimes it's personal, sometimes it's professional. So yeah, <laughs> which one there. wins though? Because I think part of the complicated, it, it gets complicated at times when someone's like, imagine somebody just, you just secured a hundred million dollar loan. Yeah. Um, you supposed to slow down? No, I mean, like, of I'm course, giving you yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> in that scenario, it's totally different, right? Like, when you have something that's that's life-changing or, um, you know, completely, um, you know, changes the, the fabric of what you're currently doing, right, then yes, you attend, you tend to that, and your partner has to be understanding that's what makes them your partner, right? Yeah. You know, it's like, it's same thing, vice versa. Say, you know, you're, you're going a thousand miles an hour, and then you get pregnant. <laughs> right it's like well okay yeah you you want to go faster right but then at the end of the day you have to make a decision if i'm going to be with this person then i need to tend to that i need to make sure that they get a little bit of extra time because uh they'll be they'll be uh needing that kind of attention in order to to go forward you know so let's or take that. a let's take a step back there real yeah, quick yeah. and tell them how difficult it is to be a father and a entrepreneur yeah uh, it it's as difficult as you make it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that I become better at balancing, right? Because I've got a handful of kids, a small, small army. Uh, <laughs> uh, but in in that, um, I know that I want my kids to grow up and, and take take over and do better than I, I was doing, right? So my my parents were corporate people. Um, they worked for other people's businesses, which they did great at, right? They were, like we said before, they were way above average. They provided everything that we ever needed and way more than we ever probably wanted. <laughs> um, but, <clears throat> you know, the reality is, is that I know that I can do better, right? And so um, I want to be able to leave something for my kids to, to step into and do better than even I, I've been doing, right? Yeah. So, um, so that kind of motivates me in a different way, right? Uh, and so when I am with my children, I tend to, to, to impart the, that wisdom on them, right? Like even in discipline, you know, like here are the reasons why, here are the consequences of your <laughs> actions, right? And here's what that's going to look like down the road. Not so much for the little ones, but you know, I've got two 10-year-olds and an 8-year-old, right? And, and those guys, they really do start to get the concepts of, you know, 
what kind of things they're doing and how that will affect them later in life. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're, they're very cognitive now. They're at that cognitive stage where yeah. it starts adding up. They're understanding. <laughs> yeah, for sure. They're way better than like I was at that age because we didn't have exposure on social media or the level of like exposure to just different stuff. Yeah. Right. That they do right now. So. Dang man. Yes. So what would be one of the things you tell people to keep their, I mean, outside of communication, I don't, I think a lot of times, uh, you know, it's a meme I saw, right. And it was like, communication is not the key comprehension is how For important sure. is it to align with someone in any relationship, even your friends and where the intent's the same. Cause my intent foundationally and everything that I do is based on care. Yeah. I mean, it, you can get, you can get into a cycle, right? Right. <laughs> like this can be a loop uh, because you know, if you communicate in a way that isn't caring, then the pe- person will know that you're not caring. Like, they will interpret that way, right? So, yeah, understanding and comprehension is, is vital, but so is the communication because I can't read your mind, right? So if I'm saying things and, and you know, my delivery is crass, but I'm doing so from a place of frustration, not because I don't care, right? And this is just an example. Yeah, yeah. But not because I don't care, but because I'm frustrated about something. Maybe something bothered me, whatever it is. You know, it's my duty to tell you I love you. Right. Yeah. It's my duty to tell you, I still care. And this is still important for X, Y, Z reasons, even though it might not sound like I, I don't care. Or even if because of something going on outside of this situation that it might not, my actions might show you that I don't care. The reality is, is I do. And circumstantially right now, it may appear different. Right. You see what I'm saying? So, absolutely. so yeah, comprehension is important, but you know, at the end of the day, they can only comprehend what we deliver. So, you know, if and you're not, what do you do when someone's not comprehending, even oh, if you are delivering it, shake them. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just get it out. I mean, like, you know, we have to get to the root cause, right? Like, you know, I face this in so many um, different discussions and, and definitely in my relationship where uh, comprehension, we are definitely, we're different people, right? And so her comprehension, she's coming from like a feeling and, and high emotions place. And I'm very like sterile and like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm one track. You know, like the emotions yeah. don't, don't affect me so much. <laughs> right now. Um, it's weird. Right. Because in that situation, she's like, you're telling me this and you say that you care, but you sound like a robot. Yeah. So, and it's like, well, they want you to be screaming and hollering yeah. and cussing and, you know, it turn them on a little bit when you punch a hole in the water. Kind of crazy shit. It's not nah, real. Do all that. Yeah, exactly. Nah. Like nobody yeah. got that kind of energy. So he's like, look, we're just going to have a discussion like adults yeah. and, and I'm not going to wreak havoc. Uh, nice. For you to believe, I shouldn't have to for you to believe that I'm, you know, what I'm saying. But they like, yeah. I've been there, bro. They want you to fucking like, I don't even. You like, woo, woo. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a, uh, I had a college uh, roommate. Uh, I wouldn't call him a roommate. But he was a guy that like was in and out of my spot for, for a bit, <laughs> uh, and he was hilarious. He played ball um, for like the. I don't know, like the the pro league or the like the the practice team or whatever. <laughs> and he was a funny dude, but he told me he said, you know, sometimes you need to go in the kitchen and bang some pots. Just don't bring none, just bang some pots around and just get her attention. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> but that is true. Like some people need that kind of like shock, right? To wake them up. But you know, my 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 approach is more like let's understand. Yeah. And if we can't logically understand because I'm not a screamer, I'm not a yeller, I don't get physical if you can't understand me, then we're going to take a break. You know, <laughs> like we'll, we'll come back to this discussion tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe in a little bit. I don't know. So, um, but yeah, communication is key. And, and the comprehension is, in my opinion, is up to me, right? If I'm going to deliver a message and you don't seem to get the message, I'm not, del- I take the burden of accountability to say that I'm not communicating effectively that you don't understand me. Right. Or you don't Who do you think then carries more of the burden in <clears throat> relationship nowadays? Because I like that you've put up put that uh, that cross on your back. Yeah, and and I know that a lot of men do. And this is kind of something we talked about first time I saw you in a while was that unfortunately there's not a lot of places for men to go and be men, right. and a lot of men don't spend time even practicing their communication skills. And we're supposed to pick up the world, give yeah. somebody the world, right. handle the world, sustain the world. Yeah. And then have nobody to talk to at the end of the day about what's really going on in our world. Yeah, facts. So that's not the kind of stuff that I'm on. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, like, obviously, like, I'm a provider, right? And yeah. I know that that's the, that's the role in the relationship that I currently have, right? Um, that I am the provider and she has, uh, she has been the child rearer, right? <laughs> and, and that's, that's okay. Like, that's not, that's not the, it's not 
good, better, or bad, like it, it's indifferent to me because that's just how we ended up. Right now, if she decided one day, she's like, I'm going to go make more money than you, I'm going to be like, please, do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would like to take a break. Uh, or she wanted to come and take these businesses over, I'm like, yes, absolutely. Uh-huh. So in that sense, I don't think that it's anybody's particular burden. It's just the role that you pick at that time, right, where you're supposed to be on the same team, you're supposed to be partners, right? And sometimes, you know, the, sometimes you have someone who's going to score. Sometimes you have someone who's going to play goalie, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's just the nature. Everybody's trying to do the same thing, and it's win, yep. right? And so, <clears throat> from my perspective, um, you know that that's kind of how I approach my partnerships and my relationships. Is that uh, you know we will agree on terms today, and that doesn't mean they don't change tomorrow, <laughs> right? Um, but today I'm going to play my role to the best of my ability, and I expect the same from you. So clarity, you you're yeah. you're direct up front and like, hey. It's not let's just let's get this out the way so we understand what what we're doing here. Well, on the things that are undefined, right? Like if you come into a relationship and everybody has their own money and everybody has their own job or their own place, and it's like okay, you know, if we do consolidate and we become like more serious than you know living in two separate places and doing two separate things, excuse me, then it becomes how do what happens when we bring that under one roof, right? Yeah. So that's a conversation, but. You know, and then if you say, all right, well, we got children now. Well, that's a whole other conversation, right? How are we going to balance the children? You know, my philosophy is, is that, like, I had so many hands to help me as a child, you know, that that's how I'm okay being raising my children, right? <laughs> yeah. Not every woman's like that, right? I mean, um, and, and that's a big deal. So, you know, if you have a woman or a, a partner, let's say, that, that says, I want to keep my own job, well, you know, I want to keep my own job too, you know? So how are we going to accommodate that? Right. We, we, we have to make enough money to bring someone in, whether it be an au pair or a nanny or whoever it is, to come help us rear our children because they need that hands on attention. That's how we got here. Yeah. Right. So um, so that's kind of that's kind of my my focus is that, you know, if if there's a gap in the team, we have to make sure that we can afford to pay for that ex- <laughs> extra player. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like we got to bring somebody on the roster. <laughs> <laughs> somebody go better go yes. play for the team. Facts. huh? Dang, man, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm that's very much like everybody's on the same, we're on the same level. Like, I don't think that I'm responsible for her emotions and she's not responsible for mine. You know, like, and, and if, I, if I'm if i responsible for her being her financial well-being, then then she's got to be picking up in places where I can't, right? Mm-hmm. And so that that's that's just kind of it. So how that's do you have how do you have that conversation though nowadays? Because you know it uh, seems to be something that uh, gets sticky, if you would. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, it's – it's only as sticky as you make it. So if, if it's sticky between you and partner, your partner having that conversation, then that person, they might not be for you. I mean, like, honestly, yeah. like it's, and I hate to be so cut and dry, but you know what, um, what we do a lot when we're young is we tolerate, right? Because <laughs> we, we have so much patience and some people have more than others. Right. But you know, a hundred percent of the time when you leave a relationship, you look back and say, I was too patient, even if you had none. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and so and so in that situation, like you have to if you have to know going in what your lines and what your boundaries are. And that comes a lot to do with like the emotional health and the well being of yourself, like knowing what things are going to keep you sane in a relationship because shit, you when you start going crazy or you start for, like forgetting who you are, that's when things really take a turn for the worst. Right. Mm-hmm. And you start, you know, you start acting out in other ways. You know, you start looking for attention outside your relationship or doing stuff that just isn't healthy or you start performing poorly at work. Right. Like that we you talking about. Like that's mm-hmm. your balance, your personal professional. Yeah. Right. Your, your life so- starts sucking at home. You don't find that outlet. Well, you're going to go to work and you're going to find, you know, you're going to start sucking it up. <laughs> so that's just how it goes. Uh, that's interesting. And the only reason why I even keep, I will say, referring back to <clears throat> some of the gender stuff, different times I put on the Fufu shows and uh, when I'm passing time. And I even saw on one instance this woman, um, she wasn't hip to put it like this. Let's say she made three times more than no boy. Mm-hmm. But because he's a man and how she was raising her house, she's like, he's supposed to pay all the bills and everything. That's bananas. And that's so even the guy who was like the, the, the pastor goes like, why is that like you make easy? You said literally you make more than he, you're the fucking director of such and such. You, you, you're doing better than he is. And he's supposed to pay every bill in the house, including the house. No, you go. That's fight music. <laughs> no, 
Like I, I yeah, continue your thoughts. Yeah, but, yeah. and that, I mean that's all it is though. So I know that it's still happening nowadays. Yeah, uh, where you know some men even like to take on the role of being stressed or in duress due to trying to do all the things that you're supposed to do that's been dictated, uh, you know, in some form or fashion by society. When in reality, if you really do look at what Parker's saying, which I agree with, the whole partnership slash team thing is like yo. But that, then it goes back to communication too, because now we got to be like yo. So I stress and this is and that. And when I come home, I'm not going to bring that with me. But if I do come home, then these things, I would appreciate if these things were done. Facts. So I don't have to live yeah. in the same hell I'm living with at work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, when you come home, it's supposed to be your sanctuary, right? So yeah. um, that's a big thing for me. That's how I was raised. And, and not everybody's like that. So, but, um, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in the fact that, like, when I walk through that door, uh, I leave everything outside. Yeah. Right now, I, it, I do bring some of it home sometimes in the sense that, um, you know, I'm a business owner, so I can't turn everything off. Mm -hmm. Right. But if I can, I will. Right now, um, back to what you just said about three times. That's, a, that's a big deal. <laughs> it's crazy to me to think that like, um, people make money, right. And they don't want to be responsible for their well being. That's insane. That's, that's what the, that's what the pastor ended up telling me. He's like, so you, let's say you make, I mean, in, in people, this is a good amount of money in America. If you're a female and you make about a buck 20 a year, and, you know, and at this point in time, husband makes like 60. So 60 he supposed to pay the house note could be $2,200, which is very common mm -hmm. for an average home. And yeah. then all of the bills and provide health insurance. What are you even doing with $120,000 a year? Like, but what is he able to do with his money? Because nothing but his, go to work and pay all the bills. That is <laughs> insane. <laughs> yeah. That's so like I live that life. Not necessarily where um, – where, she was not, she was working and making more money than me, right? Well, I would have loved that to be the case. <laughs> but um, it, more so where uh, for my first, my son, my, son, my oldest, um, she just didn't, didn't work, right? And she also wasn't like doing other stuff. <laughs> and so it became like very taxing to me, like to come home and like have to also think about food and do oh, all this God. stuff. And it's like, man, what are we doing? Yeah. You know, and this time I was working for somebody. So I was like, you know, not that I was, I was fresh out of college, you know, broke. Yeah, so but then it, that's a good segue into even that, this idea people look working for people isn't a bad thing. Being employee is a great yeah. thing, especially when you get to, you know, work with other people like Parker. But here's the thing. Someone asked me this and they said, so Tommy, like, I don't know how you get such little sleep. I said, I ain't got to go to bed and wake up and deal with that bullshit you're dealing with every day. Back. So yes. I can go to sleep and deal and manage my own stress because yeah. it's all, be, I, it's, I'm all betting on me. You. Yeah, I'm all betting on me. You. If I got to wake up and think about all five of the people I got to deal with throughout the, like, I, eight hours of my life gone dealing with fucks I don't even want to talk to. Yeah, that's crazy. And I can't even leave because now I got obligations. You got kids. You got bills. You got this. You like, I don't care. That's stress. So yeah. I could stay up and go to sleep as much as I see fit. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean. So that's, and I'm just said that because that's what that would feel like. Like if you was working for somebody, yeah. you're already stressed out dealing with the shit they putting on your then you go home and it's like, when are we having for dinner? And you've been here all day? Yeah. So it wasn't even so much that I was working for somebody, right? It was just that, like, I was trying so hard at, to do my role. And she was not, like, the role that we had agreed on is she was homemaking and I was making money, right? And at the time, like, I was fresh out of college. So I was making as much money as I could, right? Like, I, I was in a sales position. So even then, like, my checks weren't coming in just yet. Like, my commission checks, they would take, like, two quarters to, to catch up with the things I was doing today. And so, um, so in that situation where I'm like busting my butt, you know, busting my, I'm, I'm busting my ass, I'm busting yeah. my ass and she is on the couch when I come home and it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what, you know, and then on top of that, like, like the kid was sleeping in the bed, like my son was sleeping in the bed with us and it's like, man, like that's against my rules, <laughs> you know? So not only were my, not only was she not doing the part, um, as my partner, but then like to support me emotionally and like in other ways, physically, like when you have a kid in the bed, like you trying to do all kinds of stuff to like have contact with your partner, you know, you like trying to, you like hit the closet, hit the bathroom, hit, <laughs> hit the couch. Like, like being in high school all over again. We got to go like, to the dry uh, parking why, lot. Why am I paying my fucking bills to like dodge my child? Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> Put him in his room, you know? And, and that is a breakdown of a relationship. That is, that is the breakdown of that relationship. Yeah. So like, you know, and I hate to be, you know, she knows, but, uh, I know she knows. Yeah, facts. Uh, 
But like the reality is, is that that's a big problem for a lot of people. Like if we're going to be hyper focused on relationships, is that like when someone stops playing the role and the other person doesn't speak up, which I didn't, I was just like, fine, I'm just guess I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to be patient. And then afterwards, I was like, why did I do that? <laughs> I was like, what the hell was I going through? <laughs> You know, like, oh, so, so that's that's a whole nother topic then yeah. right there, just putting up with the shit. So yeah. how long are you supposed to put up with the shit for you? Never. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I mean, you. everybody knows their own tolerance for that, right? Yeah. Uh, so I can't really say objectively, um, but subjectively, I'm very much month to month when it comes to stuff like that. Like, I'm going to say something to you, and I'm going to give you my feelings, and I'm going to give you, like, how I think it can be fixed. And you can articulate it and execute that plan however you wish. As long as you execute the plan, at the end of that month, we're, we're cool. Like, you're making progress because you've executed it. Now, then there's, a, like, the second level of, um, you know, six months down the road. Uh, it's like, okay, have we have, do I feel better, right? If I don't feel better, then either I articulated wrong or if we look at what you were doing to execute that plan, you obviously were missing the target. Now, but again, the effort is so meaningful, right? Because it's, you know, once you love somebody, you care, you're like, hey, the fact that you even tried based on something that I expressed to you is enough for me, right? So let's just use that example too I gave you a minute ago, right? Where she had the baby in the bed, like she didn't even try to get that sucker out of the bed. Even if she would have <laughs> got the playpen and put it on the side of the bed, I would have been like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. this, that's an effort, right? It may not have been what I wanted because I wanted him out of the room, you know, but- <laughs> Out of the bed would have been a good start, Start right? My uncle said that before too, man. He's in his 40s, and he said, Trev, you know, men just want to believe you're doing better. Like, at least, like, you say something about wanting to go back to school, sign up for a class or some shit. Something. He was, I think it had yes. me weak. Now, it's funny because yeah. I'm here this <clears throat> probably eight years later from this a different, a completely different person, yeah. but with the same intent because when you do want more from a person, the number one thing I think we all enjoy from anybody is effort. Because yeah. that I can, I can point effort in the right direction yeah. and help you tighten up the way in which you're like doing a few things. Exactly. It's like, a, it's like an employee too, right? right? Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I don't like my partner to an employee, but you know, it, it, it's, it's applicable in every way of life, right? Like whether you're starting your business or you're doing anything, like you can't get progress without effort. And so, you know, when you're in a relationship, you you obviously have a lot more grace for that person. And so, because you committed or whatever it is, right? And so when you give them something and they make progress by just trying, that's huge. <laughs> now, now if they try to, to and it's, it's all off the mark, right? Like immediately you need to fix it. But you know, <laughs> the fact is, is that the fact that they tried is a good step in the right direction. So people, let me give you a perspective. Think about this real quick. Think about the top five people you know and how much effort they put into things they do. And I mean real effort. Real effort isn't them getting up, going to work, and going to the gym every, every day. That's monotony. Someone who genuinely is seeking a truth or a goodness or you know a way in which they can improve by having the conversation and then even more importantly applying that information. And what you'll realize very quickly is – Less than 1% of the top five people you know, oftentimes, this is not for everybody, they don't put much effort towards anything. Right. If anything, they go and do things so that they can achieve less than, so they can get by in life. Yeah. And I know people like Parker and myself who are overachievers, to say the least. We, we, we don't know how to do less than. Yeah, no, for sure not. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually my thing. I say do more, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that, do more. That was, that was your thing, and it's still a yeah. thing. So you go, how do you really get people to see like what effort yeah. looks like or feels like because some people get there they get uncomfortable yeah no, and what, sure. then what do you do when they're like uh, i don't know if i want to work that hard yeah no you got to <laughs> and it's like what are you talking about <laughs> you want results you got to work hard and the heart and the bigger results the harder you got to work and uh and, and and not only that but you also have to work hard at learning how to work smarter mm -hmm. it's just you know every, every little every little step is work and so um so yes yeah, it's, it's interesting to, to me that people who like want results and then don't want to try Crazy. Hey, hey they, they, you know, and this is, and I'll, we'll finish this topic off with this right here and he'll, he'll chime in. So a lot of times in my opinion, and this is my opinion, people, it's going to rub some people the wrong way. I'm I'm, I'm but here's the thing, Conflict. A, a woman sees a guy and nine out of 10 times, the way in which these two individuals operate mentally are very different. So a guy's like, I'm a, I'm a fucker. The girl's like, I'm gonna marry that nigga, you know? Yeah, but, it's crazy. <laughs> especially what if she get, yeah, yeah, especially if she gets annoyed. It's like, oh, this is a high valued man. Yeah. So here's a challenge: you start off with the idea of marrying him. He started off to deal with putting his dick in you. 
Ooh, yeah. <laughs> the, yes. the, the challenge is, is you don't want to do the work in between to get him there. You know, yeah. you know how much work it requires for a relationship, both to be healthy and intentional, meaningful to grow. Yeah. They want to emulate this idea of what they say, power couple, all this other, but don't want to put no power into the work that has to be, you know, done in a relationship a lot of times. Yeah. Um, I forget. There's a comedian that I think talks about this. And he's like, you know, the man spends, you know, however much time trying to get into her drawers, right? Yeah. And then that at that point, the woman is in love, and there she's like falling, and the man has now become exhausted from that <laughs> process, <laughs> right? And uh, and as a result of being exhausted from that process, and he he pauses, and now she pauses too. Oh, I saw that on TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and so there's a little bit of that, right? Like, you know, um, not saying that men or women bring less to the table than men do, because that's not the case, right? Partners just bring different shit to the table. Yeah. But the point is, in my opinion, um, that, you know, when, you have to be cognizant of that, <laughs> right? You have to be cognizant of who's strength, who's strong, who's weak, what you're strong at, what you're weak at. And uh, be able but to But intent too, that. though, right? Yeah. Because the intent a lot of times, like, you can even tell, like, oh, I'm you not You can't change nature, for... though, right? Like, yeah. you can't change the fact that a woman is going to be more loving in nature and a man is going to be more, like, primal in nature. Like, it's just, <laughs> there's nothing we can take out they of keep, us. And they keep trying to change it, though. Yeah, that's bananas. They keep trying to take the primal instinct of seek and destroy that's built into yeah. a man's DNA yeah. versus, like, oh, you're supposed to love. Like, I'm a lover after I get these draws. I mean, yeah, everybody's different, right? Like, then you have like you have so many factors that play into that as with us as sentient beings, right? Like, you have religion, people. Uh, uh-huh. You've got um, just over, overall just moral standing. Like, we just can't get into all the different facets of what makes people make those decisions, right? But, um, but yeah, I mean, the reality is is that if if you if your future or prospective partner doesn't come to understand that um, those needs or you know the things like to modify, right? So say let's just say. Uh, <clears throat> as an example, um, you take someone like me who's had kids out of, out of wedlock, right? And, and if I was on the free market, I approach someone who is a Christian, she's virgin or whatever, right? Like she's yeah. not having kids out of wedlock. She's not having sex out of wedlock, right? She's locked down. She's locked down. Well, you know, as a man, yeah, I mean, like I'm going to have those urges, but at the same time, like if that person's for me, I'm going to make the modifications to my behavior, <laughs> right to to make sure that I secure that person and and I would expect the same right like I'm not expecting them to to like drop their moral standings because is sex a moral standing for me no not really like it's a need but I don't morally need it <laughs> you know like I like it's like a it's like it's like one of those things that yeah it's it's in me and I want it all the time right but like is it going to change the fabric of who I am if I don't have it probably not yeah you know, so like that's kind of I think the little a little bit of the difference. Like it, you know, complexity of us of us being humans and the emotions that we have is so wide and, and varying. Yeah, because like we all come from different backgrounds. But again, like your understanding and your ability or anybody's ability to like handle or tolerate certain behaviors or certain like moral patterns, you know, that is something that like you guys have to figure out pretty quick, right? Like, it, and I don't think it makes it better or worse, right? Like you, it, it, you know, like. Like I'm, I'm very understanding. Like, I'm very understanding. And, and like some men, they want like that seek and destroy. They want a woman who's going to submit and just be, just like deal with that. Right. And not deal with it, but like, like that's the, the, the role that they fit into yeah. when it comes to like the sexual prowess or whatever it is, the intimacy. And, uh, yeah, I really don't give a shit about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like it's not important to me. <laughs> Like sex is important. Don't even like this. Is not people. This is not does not admit, pretend. But at the same time, like there's a hundred other things that are more important to me that lead up to that. And, and as long as we're fucking every day, that's important too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, it keeps the doctor away, people. I'll tell you right yeah, now, I'm, bro. I'll way better with... than an apple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, well, and listen, the understanding part, too, is sometimes you got to understand this person might need a little bit more work, right? Yeah. And, and then when you do have, I like the word morals, because morals and ethics have been taken out a lot, of, a lot of things as well. Yeah. And then when you know who you are, you know, then it's kind of like your intent changes. Like, uh, I'm not chasing my dick bit, or I'm chasing, like, I got to I got to move smart. Yeah. So you can't do everything, and if, you know, realistically, at the value, so OG told me this when I was a kid, you know, he just said, 
uh, they call me something else on the other side of town, but he <laughs> said, uh, basically, if you can't see yourself having a kid with her, don't fuck her. And there's a lot of chicks that I denied for the reason that they'd be like, I want to have kids, this and that one. That's how you good luck. Well, I'm yeah. not talking about right now. I'm not talking about never for me never. personally. So I'm like, on God. take it easy. Take it easy. I don't even want to walk down that road with you because I already know at some point in time, if something does happen too, I got to live with that. And I don't want to live with that. Yeah. So, and you definitely ain't it. So Facts. if it, it accident did happen, I don't want to deal with a kid with your ass. Oh. I mean, everything <laughs> that you right here. That, yes. I'm agreeing. <laughs> everything that you are, I wouldn't want to deal with for the rest of my life, let alone bring no kid to fuck him up in this world. So you're just like, I'm going to stay out of it because I would never want a kid to turn out like you, point blank. So And that's all through conversation. I ain't even touched these motherfuckers. I literally just asked a couple questions. Okay. OG, I met another OG. He said, I said, what happened? He said, we don't think the same. And I didn't understand that when I was young. And you get a little bit older and you think, yeah. <laughs> Boy, people spend a lot of time arguing with people about fucking nothing because of different thoughts and thought patterns and even ability to comprehend, understand, see the bigger picture, do the work. You go, Oh, I get what he's saying now yeah. because I, if we don't even think the same and in to your point, even about you saying, Hey, you understanding that role you got to play. Mm-hmm. Then you got to, and, and, and if I'm the fucking coach, I don't care. Yeah. You be the MVP. Like some people don't understand that yeah. be it. I, I, if I go out here and coach do the money, go out here and do all this, all the stress, most valuable player should be the boss lady in a sense, yeah. you know, yeah. your partner. You're like, and that, and that's just your perspective, right? I mean, yeah. like everybody's that's just my got, perspective. yeah, everybody got perspective on it. So, <laughs> it's true. Oh well, people, this little relationship talk. I I could foresee at least two more with my guy Parker. Yeah. Man, this guy is good. This guy is good. I like the I like the banter. I like the candor. <laughs> I like the truth. We got a couple other things. I know at some point, just for foreshadowing people, uh, we want to talk about mental health with you as well and yeah, therapy sure. and all that stuff. We because yeah. you and I have talked about it off uh, camera and around no one, but I think it's important as it well. Is vital. <laughs> it, it, it is vital so we'll definitely have him back on probably in the next week or so man good friend of mine thank you so much for participating man yeah for sure i appreciate you yeah. guys look like subscribe share we're definitely dropping some of these clips on the ig i'll be sending them to him yeah. i told him uh a while ago along with his buddy james that they've got a good story to tell i think we got to find a way to tell it in some form or fashion um the guy works like a workhorse he knows a lot he he's calm cool collected <laughs> yeah. and and i think he's got something to share yeah. So, Thanks. A- anything you want to leave them with? No, man. I mean, like, this has been fun. I look forward to doing more. Boom. Yeah. Stay tuned, people. Yeah.